So for example, Media.net gave me around 11 to 12 lakhs of bonuses. Even if they give you 30 lakhs of ESOPs, that is not liquidifiable. At least they will give you more joining bonus. For this product based company, you know, base can start around. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Riddhi Dutta. I'm a software engineer at Google. And in this video, I'm going to talk about why I never joined a startup company. So let's get started. So there came a point in my career where I badly wanted to join a startup. Then I backed against it. And those are the reasons I'm going to exactly talk about in this video. First, we're going to talk about that why I badly wanted to join a startup. And then I'm going to give you my reasons that why I didn't end up joining them. Sharing my experience so that you can understand and take an informed decision that whether startup would be the right choice for you or any fang type of companies. So I had passed out from a tier three college. And you know, like from a tier three college, you don't have a lot of options. They say that beggars are not choosers. So I pretty much got into a company company uh, where I got. So I started with, uh, you know, a service based company. I spent a year over there and then I got a chance to work for Amazon. So I got this offer from Amazon as an SD1 position and that was the only decent offer I got at that time. Let me put this straight, the only decent interview opportunity that I got. And also the company which was paying me a decent amount as compared to other companies. The other reason for me to join Amazon was obviously the band because you know I am I was from a tier 3 college so I would get very less opportunities. People would not even give me interview opportunities just because I was from a tier 3 college which was not very well known. So that's why the brand was very important and it was very important for me to spend two years at least two, one or two years with that brand tag associated. I'm not saying that startups don't have any good brand but it's just that I didn't get any opportunity. So to crack this product based companies be it a startup or a fang MNC you need the right preparation. But wait hang on are you confused from where to start or where to learn coding from? Are you overwhelmed with the plethora of courses that is floating around and you want to get everything at one place? Then don't worry, you are at the right place because Geeks for Geeks has come up with a premium subscription. So instead of buying different courses from multiple places, just buy a single subscription at one place and that to at a very affordable price. Premium shall give you access to 35 plus top rated courses, AI powered coding exercises, ad free experience, personalized notes, text summarization, Yogi Bot. So you can see on the screen there are multiple courses and you can practice the coding problems. If you are stuck, you can watch the video lectures, there are quiz, there are contest and also you can download certificate after completion of each course. You can get access to the Geeks for Geeks premium available in half yearly and annual models. Also people who would buy this premium subscription through my link will get a one year bonus subscription too. So hurry up, I will attach the link to this in the description down below. Go check it out and now let's continue with the video. Now fast forward when I was working for Amazon and I was looking for a switch after almost two years, I thought that maybe startup is something that I should definitely try now after getting a taste of the big MNC. A primary reason was the project that I was working on at Amazon, it had acquired a startup and 50-60% of the members were all from the startup background. Like basically Amazon acquired this company and now all these people from the startup were working for Amazon along with us. So there were a lot of fun. They were very chill and knowledgeable people and talking to them made me realize that, you know, startups might be a very cool place to work for and learn a lot of new things. Now here are the reasons why I wanted to go for a startup. First thing, as I said, the promotion is way faster. Like, you know, in a, in a, in a startup company, you can get promoted from a junior software engineer to a mid-level software engineer in, in, in an year but as compared to you know fan companies where it takes almost two to two and a half years to get promoted plus the competition is much more fierce. Second reason was you know you in a startup you get to wear multiple hats whereas in an MNC uh, there are roles and responsibilities being assigned to different engineers like there's a DevOps per person there's a team of DevOps people there's a team of test testers uh, there's a team of developers and then again within the developers there also there are front-end people back-end people so there are, there are, there have enough people to do uh, uh, to delegate these specific jobs to them and all they want is specialization. Whereas in startups, uh, obviously they don't have the budget to hire so many people. So therefore, you know, sometimes engineers have to do multiple things. So that's why I said multi wearing multiple hats and that's a very cool thing, you know, uh, because when you're starting off, you get to know about a lot of these things, uh, which can be very beneficial going forward to your career. The other thing was, you know, all these big tech companies, for example, right now I'm in Google and Google has a lot of internal tech stacks, right? So not, I mean, obviously it's great to know about, learn about these tech stacks and how Google manages uh, huge code in production. But at the same time, if I go in the outside world, these tech stacks are of little use, right? But in startups, they work with open source, you know, open source projects. So if you learn them, it has some value in the outside world because a lot of other companies are also using that same tech stacks. So to cut short, the learning curve was way better in a startup than in an MNC. And that's what I realized at that point of time. 
So the other thing I really liked about working for a startup is, you know, the chill people around and the culture is very, you know, informal and you know a lot of people around you as compared to the big tech companies. You can even go and have a chat with the CEO, learn from them, learn a bit of a thing about how to run a startup. So, you know, so this again, like it all comes under the learning curve and the serendipities that surrounds it. So, I mean, these are the things that really motivated me a lot to join a startup. And that is why when I was switching from Amazon, I was trying to interview for a lot of startup companies and I got a couple of offers from uh, established startups like media.net and then byju's and then uh, there was another company mindtickle etc etc now these were only the positive factors that were motivating me to join a startup but reality struck soon here coming to the reasons why i didn't join a startup and the number one reason is obviously money so you might be thinking do startups really don't pay well because i'm very sure a lot of you have heard that startups sometimes go bonkers and they pay more than the fan companies. Yeah, see, exceptions are there. But in most cases, you would see where startups are saying that they give more money. It can also mean that they're paying you more in hand. They're giving you more base. But when it comes to the total compensation, here where the catch lies. So when I was trying to make the switch from Amazon to uh, any XYZ company, right? I was looking for SD2 positions because I was already three years experienced in this industry. And I was already working as an SD1 at Amazon itself. Now, let us take a step back and understand the salary structure of these companies for SD2 levels, right? For this product-based companies, you know, base can start around 30 and can go till 50 and all not. So there's a huge range and it depends on companies. You can go through my uh, salary playlist, not salary playlist, but company review playlist to uh, understand that how much these companies pay. And for startups, the base is also very similar to this, right? So, so, I mean, the base can be in the late 30s and if you push them a lot, they can give you a base till 40 as well. Some startups can pay more, but again, the base is around 30 to 50 at max. So I haven't seen a lot of 50. TLPA paying companies. Now, what are the other components? Because, you know, the big MNCs will also pay you the base. So base is the salary that comes in hand. And then the other components are joining bonuses. So even startups are okay to pay you that. But there is a catch that, you know, even if you leave the company within a year, you have to pay uh, back the joining bonuses. Now, when you're joining an MNC like, you know, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, it is expected that you're, you're going to stay there for, you know, more than a year. But for a startup, you never know. What if you get your priorities changed? What if you're not able to cope up with the enormous work pressure that the startup company entails, right? So a lot of things can happen that can, that can go wrong or that can make you change your decision. But anyway, coming back, the, they also give you the joining bonuses and the all types of bonuses they would give, right? So for example, Media.net gave me around 11 12 lakhs of bonuses, <laughs> different sorts of bonuses, right? The other thing is the stocks, right? So for example, you know, all these fan companies, they give you crazy amount of stocks, especially at SD2 level. Now you might be arguing with me that, hey, that is not something that is coming to our hand, but hang on, if you are getting enhanced salary, right? You won't be spending the, all, all the salary, right? You would be investing it somewhere. You would be putting it into mutual funds or, you know, direct stocks, right? Equities or maybe FDs, right? I mean, we all know that at this age, everyone is investing into the stock market because it gives better yield and, you know, fixed deposits and all. So I'm not going the, into that discussion because I'm not an investment expert, but this is what I've seen mostly people doing, right? So now you can understand that, you know, whatever base you're getting, a part of it or anyway going to put it out into the stock market. So if a company, if an established company like a FANG company, who's already listed right it is giving you us stocks right then don't you think that is also adding to a network so you can sell that stock any day and liquidify it because it's a listed stock however for a startup things are a bit different because most of these startups are not listed startup right and they would give you something called esops and esops are very hard to liquidify i'm not saying you cannot liquidify it at all there is some buyback stuff which you can search like basically sell the esops and all but most of the time you have to wait for the company to go ipo and then you know then that stock comes under then the company stock is listed and then you can sell and liquidify it right so esops are something like they can give you to make that cities inflated and you know, make it match uh, with the big tech companies. But understand that these ESOP components are not liquidifiable, right? So now, for example, just to make things structured for you, let's say there's a startup company and there's an MNC company. I'm not taking names, you would understand. So let's say the startup company is paying you a base of 35 lakhs, right? The MNC company is paying you a slightly lesser base. He is paying you 33 right and then let's say they are giving you equal joining bonuses 5 lakhs 5 lakhs so that's fine that is neutralized and then the mnc company is giving you listed stocks of 30 lakhs more so the total compensation now comes up 33 plus 63 lpa for your mnc 
But here's where the startup would fail to do so because even if they give you 30 lakhs of ESOPs, that is not liquidifiable, right? Because they are not a listed company. They might give you 20 lakhs of ESOPs, then you might argue that, hey, I need more money, I need more cash in hand because obviously the ESOPs are something that cannot be, I cannot liquidify. So then they either might increase the base here a little bit, but they're not going to increase it out of range. They're not going to give you like 60 lakhs of base near. They're not going to give that. They might increase your base to 37, 8, right? And the rest they would say, hey, I would give you 10 lakhs of joining bonus. So 15 lakhs. In 15 lakhs, so nahi deta hai, but at least they will give you 10 lakhs more joining bonus. And somehow, you know, with these ops and all, they will try to match your offer and say, Here's we are we are matching that offer that you that you have got from MNC, right? So you can and, and that bonus obviously you have to return it within a year. So there are multiple conditions over there. And that's exactly what happened to me. I'm not taking names of the company, but this is exactly what happened to me. And that's where I figured out you know, compensation wise, there is a huge gap. So therefore, you can understand, especially for an SD2 position or rubber position, it's kind of difficult to join a startup because you have to take a pay cut. That's that's something that I faced. I don't know about your experience, but this is what I faced and based on the experiences of my friends. However, for SD1 and junior level roles, things are slightly different because the MNC and for SD1 roles, they don't give you crazy amount of stocks, right? And then startups give you more base to, you know, uh, like negate for that, right? So, and anyway, if you're joining your first company as a startup, you're anyway going to stay there for one or two years, right? Not probably not more than that. And at that time, I mean, you are okay to compensate a little bit on the money, but your main focus is on learning because you're starting off your career and you don't have a lot of responsibilities or burdens on you. So that is the moment I understood that it makes a lot of sense for people to join a startup at the starting of the career, but at the mid of the career, it's a bit difficult, especially if they have offers from MNCs. So again, your perceptions can be different or whatever, your necessities might be different. So make sure to take that informed decision. The other thing is the work-life balance. So yeah, star startups have a crazy work-life balance. There's a lot of work pressure. Yeah, the learning curve is high but there's a lot of work pressure right uh, which can be difficult sometimes because now right now I'm, a, I'm almost having five years of experience and the my goals uh, in life and my necessities in life have kind of changed right uh, based on what I was five years back right so see since these are the circumstances right and also I want some time to you know for myself as well so that is the reason uh, that was another point to reason why I backed off uh, but yeah the main main focus was the compensation and the third reason is when you're working for a startup things are very unstructured you can literally write a code and push it to production next day but that won't happen like in a company like Google because it would take days and there's a lot of process structured that gets followed and that also helps you to learn and uh, even if you write bad code I'm not saying that it is going to be accepted in startups, but uh, the friction is going to be less as compared to the big tech companies, right? So, so quality of code that you write is more non-negotiable, I would say, in big tech companies because they can't afford to push bad code to production because there's a lot of user base that is dependent on it and there are a lot of processes in place as well. But in startups, you might get away with, with it. Like, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that every startup is like that, but in most of the startups, the friction is less. And somewhere down the line you know you might take things a bit casually and that's why that's why when you come to an mnc you might you know struggle a bit initially but again these are there are exceptions and i'm talking on a very generic level but yeah my reasons were definitely the first two and that's why i opted out a startup but i thought of you know sharing these differences between us joining a startup and an mnc based on my experience because in case uh like you are planning uh for a switch or you're looking to join a company you might be confused at which company to join which type of company to join this video might help you right so now my two cents for you guys would be that uh, if you're starting off your career, go and join a startup because the learning curve would be much more higher and then you can switch back to an MNC uh, anytime and with all those learnings, you would get a faster growth in the MNC, right? Because the learning curve, the growth process in a startup is way better. But if, the, if it is the other way around and you're now, you have spent some time in an MNC and now you're looking to join a startup in midway your career and the compensation is some, somewhat important to you, I'm very sure it is, then you can have a second thought, right? You can go for an year or two just for, the, for, just for an experience, but these are the challenges that I face and I'm very sure like it is like a pretty common known problem in the market so if this video was helpful don't forget to press the like button because this motivates me a lot to make more such videos and don't forget to share it among your friends especially among those people who are looking to you know get confused with this question basically and don't forget to comment down below that what type of company you're willing to join you can like mention the company name as well having said that i would bid adieu to you guys i would come up with some new topic and with some new videos some other day till then stay safe and goodbye